And now it's time for Matt Hunter says, 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 says. Hi, Matt Hunter here. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about influences. That's things that inspired me uh, when I was growing up. Uh, part of uh, what made growing up in the late 80s, early 90s so unique uh, is that our TV was better. Our cartoons were better, probably than they'd ever been before. And part of that was because it was a blend of stuff that our parents and grandparents grew up with, as well as new stuff that was inspired by that. And cartoons in general, animation was going through kind of a, a renaissance at the time. Uh, two of the major studios anyway, that would be Disney and Warner Brothers, were both producing new cartoons all the time for Saturday morning and also for weekday afternoons uh, at a rate that which they'd never been done before and at a, a level of quality that had not been seen on TV animation anyway for a long time. Um, and if you grew up watching the cable channels like Nickelodeon or the Cartoon Network, uh, which were both fairly new, you got a blend of old and new and that was that was something very unique now it's all about new shows and it's all like the same show over and over again like if you don't like spongebob tough because we're going to show it five times in a row all day long or you, you know you don't like uh, uh whatever that crap cartoon network's putting out now like gumball or you know teen titans or whatever you just got to watch the same show over and over uh, it wasn't like that back in the day it was you know anything goes and they would show anything so nickelodeon for example at one point they were showing uh you know the classic looney tunes for example which are my favorites uh and they also had newer stuff at the time they were coming out with their own cartoons and uh one of those i would say was uh ren and stimpy uh they came out with ren and stimpy they came out with rocco's modern life uh, Doug, Rugrats, any number of others, the Angry Beavers, the uh, Real Monsters, they had all kinds of things. Uh, and, you know, Warner Brothers uh, on the Fox Network for a while, and then it moved to the WB, they had Animaniacs, they had Pinky and the Brain. Uh, before that was Tiny Toons, which was inspired by Looney Tunes. It was the next generation. Um, but all this stuff was going on. And at the same time, you could also watch... Uh, you know, old stuff like Rocky and Bullwinkle, uh, which was one of the funniest cartoons ever made, or Yogi Bear, which was Hanna-Barbera at their best, or The Flintstones, which was the same way. It was Hanna-Barbera. Uh, and what all that is is a master class of voice acting because all of these cartoons had, um, you know, people who could do incredible voices. Um you know, even even if it was only one voice, you had uh, Batman, for example, Batman, the animated series uh, that was, you know, Batman was voiced by a guy named Kevin Conroy. And that was his only real voice acting role. And he's still doing it to this day, you know, 25 years later. Uh, so it's, you know, just all that stuff I used to watch, um, you know, and let's not forget the Disney stuff, Darkwing Duck. You know, Jim Cummings is this amazing guy who could do Darkwing Duck. He was also Winnie the Pooh. Uh, he was the Tasmanian Devil for Warner Brothers. water. <laughs> so, uh, and then, you know, DuckTales, that was a Disney thing. And uh, Uncle Scrooge McDuck was played by um, a guy named Alan Young, who was... You know, pretty much that was his only cartoon voice that he ever did. He was a live action actor. He actually played Wilbur Post on uh, Mr. Ed. If you ever saw that show, that was a that was on Nickelodeon too. Uh, it was an old black and white sitcom about a guy who has a talking horse. <laughs> I mean, you can't make this stuff up. But anyway, so I watched all this stuff, and somewhere along the line, it just kind of sunk in that you know, hey, there's somebody doing this voice. There's an actual human behind it. Uh, and maybe if I have a good enough ear, I can sort of figure out what they're doing and figure out how they're doing the voice. Um, and what kind of clicked for me one time was I, I saw an interview with Mel Blanc, um, and I saw him talking in his real voice, which, uh, if you never heard him talk in his real voice, because he had thousands of others, uh, he, he kind of had this, uh, low register, you know, he, uh, he talked kind of like this. He had a, a kind of deep voice 
and uh, you know he was a, a lifelong smoker and he kind of had this this quality about it but so you figure out okay that's him and then you hear him change from that to doing Bugs Bunny you know he talks about you know I was looking for a tough little stinker so I thought Brooklyn or the Bronx and uh, so I put the two of them together doc and I got Bugs Bunny <laughs> and uh, you know then you kind of keep it in that uh, that vocal register there and you get Bugs Bunny who uh, like I say, he's uh, he's not quite Brooklyn, he's not quite Bronx, he's New York, uh, but he's uh, he's his own character, and he's Mel Blanc just as much as he's Bugs Bunny, Doc. Um, but then you take it back down to to Mel's normal voice, and then and then you add a lisp and a little bit of gravel to it, and all of a sudden you got Sylvester, Fuffer and Fuckatash, you know Sylvester and. And uh, you, you hear him sing in, as Sylvester, actually, on um, there's this, this old uh, Capitol record. They actually turned it into a cartoon. Uh, it's called um, I Told I Taught Booty Tat. Uh, and he sings as Sylvester, and he just tears it up. You wonder, you know, how, how did he keep his voice like that, you know? But, you know, he's like, oh, you bet I saw a booty tat. That booty tat is me. Fuffer and fuck a tash. You know, so that's that's kind of my, you know, my intro to Mel Blanc anyway. Um, and I'll do others as, as time goes on, but I just wanted to kind of, you know, show you, you know, what I grew up with and why I am the way I am. And there's a cat.